Hey, I'm Adam with Aerial Motion Photography and in this video, I'm going to be comparing the video quality of the Mavic Mini to the Mavic Zoom. What I want to do in this video, I want to do things apple to apples. So we know that the max quality this um, Mini can put out is 2.7K at 30 frames per second. So I'm going to set up the Mavic 2 Zoom, the same thing, 2.7K at 30 frames per second. I was doing some preliminary tests, just trying to see if I can get my footage to line up side by side, and I was having trouble. Um, I tried to use landmarks and I followed a path and um, tried to continue along that, and still when I actually put the video onto the computer, it didn't line up and um, things were at different heights and different widths and things like that, and it wasn't something that I was easily able to compare and to really see um, what drone and what footage um, and if it's even comparable because of light and altitude and all that kind of stuff. So I wanted to do something and I wasn't sure what to do but somehow this just popped to my mind and I thought what if I tape the Mavic Mini to the bottom of my Mavic Zoom that way when I'm flying it'll be flying down the exact same path the footage should line up so well because it's from the same area and that should be like the ultimate way to be able to compare the footage. So for me to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tape and I'm just going to tape the Mavic Mini to the bottom of the Mavic Zoom. The Mavic Mini weighs just under 250 grams and I looked up the payload for the Mavic Zoom and it can do about 900 grams. So we're not pushing the boundaries, um, but I've never actually tested any payload. So it's gonna be interesting to see how the drone flies with some extra weight underneath it. The supplies that I'm gonna use is packing tape, electrical tape, and then some saran wrap. And I'll get around to why I'm gonna use the saran wrap shortly. First kind of brainstorming, I was thinking, okay, where do I wanna mount it? Do I wanna mount it on the bottom or on the top? And um, I was just kind of seeing how things work. I thought, okay, the top might be a good call. Um, that way I can kind of scoot the drone forward and have it be as lined up as possible. But it was so close to being knocked by the propellers that I thought it's not worth it. Um, who knows if it'll shift a little bit and I don't want to lose both my drones or crash one really badly. So next plan was to mount it on the bottom. There's a video that I made in the past is if you could fix your gimbal with tape, if you want to click up right here, and that's where I kind of got this, I don't know what you call it, like experience of what it does taping things to your drone. And what I realized is this electrical tape, it leaves a residue and you can't really see it anymore. But when I taped it up really good to try to get the gimbal straight, in that video, basically I had a gimbal that was broken, it was acting funny, and I needed to get the shots. So I just used tape and I just taped it up really good and it was steady and I was able to at least finish the job. So that's a cool video to watch and it's really short too. That's why I have the saran wrap. I'm gonna use the saran wrap just to go around the drone and that's gonna um, not have any of the tape residue actually contact on the drone itself. I'm gonna flip this over and see what we're working with. Take off the lens caps. Take off the lens cap. And I wanna find a way to put it in a secure place, but make sure that the gimbal of the zoom isn't gonna to touch the Mavic Mini, because that wouldn't be good. And part of my plan is I wanna have the cameras angled um, as close as I can to the same degree, so I'll be able to mesh the photos um, better and better. Well, you'll notice on the Mavic Zoom, also on the Mavic Pro, and a lot of other DJI drones that are more advanced than the Mavic Mini, is it has these sensors. And you're gonna have to turn these sensors off if you wanna do anything with attaching something or payload and things like that, because it's gonna be sending to your comp the computer of the drone to your controller, and it's gonna say, um, like there's an obstacle, it can't take off, it'll probably have like a lot of warnings and beeping, and um, that's something that you need to turn off so you'll be able to fly peacefully and not have the drone go into any fail-safe modes and things like that. I'm also going to put a video up right now and the title is How to Fly Your Drone Indoors and why that's relative to this is because when you fly indoors you have to turn these sensors off. 
Otherwise, when you'd fly over a table or an object, the drone would read that and then it would automatically fly up to the whatever the set hovering is. And if you're doing that inside, you don't want it to crash into the ceiling like that. So that's actually how I learned how to turn these sensors off. I'm gonna start with the saran wrap, go over the Mavic Zoom, and then I think next I'll use the packing tape and then to finish it off, the electrical tape. What I like about electrical tape is you can really stretch it out and it's, it's really strong. So I think that'll be a really good thing to do at the very end. And if you look at this, it actually fits pretty well. The way it just kind of lines up, this kind of braces it and it's like a stopper to the bottom of the Mavic Mini. And I feel like I'll be able to tape it tight enough and to get the kind of test footage that I want to get. The first thing I'm going to do is to use the saran wrap and go around the drone like that. So I'm just going to pull off a piece, use the scissors, and then cut something about that big. It doesn't have to be perfect. The only job this is is just to not leave tape residue on the drone. So I'm going to put it around like that. It's perfectly. Then I'm going to take some packing tape and go around it two times. And let's see if the GoPro can pick this up. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure I don't tape over the power button. So I want to tape near it. But remember, you still have to be able to turn the drone on. So don't just wrap it around. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna do it a little bit behind here. Let's see if I have enough tape to go around. Next, I wanna take the electrical tape and I wanna put it around right here. And that's to help the saran wrap stay on there because the wind's gonna be coming like that and I don't want it to unfold and to fall off while it's in the air. So yeah, just like that, good to go around. And you can see that the saran wrap is doing the job. It's in between the drone and um, the tape. And I'm not sacrificing any strength or anything like that. Okay, now we have that. And it's perfect. I still am able to push the power button. On the Mavic Mini, I just want to use packing tape. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to cut little slits along these air vents so that the drone's still able to breathe. I don't want this thing to overheat. The drones, when they're built, they're built so that they can have airflow. So the faster it's flying, the more air that it has to cool it down. And since it's not going to be getting any air, I don't want it to overheat. I think one time is good enough. And you can see those air vents. So I'm gonna take my scissors and just poke a little hole so that the drone can still breathe. That should be good. Now to attach the baby to the big daddy. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna tape it a little farther up than I was thinking at the beginning. And I think right about there seems good. This is where I could go around with the packing tape and kind of stick these things together. But I want to make sure that my first wrap is something that's really strong. So I'm going to use this electrical tape. The most important thing is just for it to be on there. It's not about looks. Stretch that tape nice and tight. We don't want the drone to be moving around, hopefully not even moving around so that this footage is stable, but I don't want it to slip or I'm not even gonna jinx it. Jinx, buy me a coat. I wanna make sure it's on there. And I'm also making sure that I don't go over the power button for the Mavic Mini. And boom, just like that, we got the Mavic Mini taped to the bottom of the Mavic 2 Zoom. It looks like the gimbal will not hit the Mavic Mini at all, so that was good placement. Everything seems kind of stable. It's not shaking around. 
I figured this is the ultimate way to do apples to apple tests. 2.7K, 30 frames per second. I mean, flying directly underneath it. It can't get any more lined up than that. My goal is that when we put the footage together, we're not gonna get distracted by the drone being at different lengths or the horizon and things like that. I want it to be more together and then we can just focus on the differences, the quality and see what they are, see what drone has better video. I don't know, is this Mavic Mini gonna surprise us? It's been pretty good and really excited to go fly this thing. Uh, let's put it in the air, come back on the computer, put it together and then I'll talk to you guys even more. All right, so for my first flight testing this off, I just wanna stay low to the ground to make sure the drones will stay together. But as you can see in this video, the Mavic Zoom is on the left side, the Mavic Mini is on the right. The Mavic Zoom, the green is a lot brighter and has some more definition. And then on the Mavic Mini side, the ground is duller. It kind of seems like it's lost clarity. It's not as visually appealing as the Mavic Zoom. In this clip, I'm flying in the same place, just the other direction. And this is where the Mavic Mini is really shining. You can see with the sun at its back, the sky is bluer and it has more definition. The Mavic Zoom, the grass is greener and more clear, but I really like the footage of the Mavic Mini in this direction. In this clip, I wanted to fly up about 100 feet, start filming away from the sun, then pan slowly around so we could get the full effect and then start flying in the other direction, which is towards the sun. This is where I think I see the biggest difference between the two drones. It's always flying into the sun. I feel like the Mavic Zoom, it has more clarity and more detail. Flying into the sun, the Mavic Mini, it looks duller, dimmer, and not as visually appealing as the Mavic Zoom. Here I am flying at the beach and I'm flying towards the ocean and towards the pier. You'll see the Mavic Mini. I really, really liked how this footage is coming out. The water is much more appealing blue. The color of the sand is nice as well. If you look at the Mavic Zoom, everything's darker. It has a lot of contrast. Yes, it does have more detail, but in this shot, the Mavic Mini is outperforming the Mavic Zoom. All right, starting out with the Mavic Mini again away from the sun, the colors look really, really good. Now with them side by side, you'll see the Mavic Zoom, the water's more blue, it has a richer color to it, more detail. The Mavic Mini, it's more green. It is a really nice blue, but I think when you see them side by side, you'll see how the Mavic Zoom is superior. Also, as always, you notice that with the Mavic Mini, the sky is bluer. So I think that's something really cool about the Mavic Mini having the bluer sky. Here I am flying up Main Street, and with it zoomed in like this, the footage looks almost identical between the Mini and the Zoom. It's really hard to tell if one drone is outperforming the other in this shot. Here we have the Mavic Zoom on top and the Mini on the bottom. Doing this pull away shot, you can tell the Mavic Zoom has a lot more definition. I think it's the way that the sun's coming from on the side. The Mavic Mini, it still has that blue, that appealing look, and I think it's something that will look good on social media. And what I mean by that is something that will look better on a smaller screen. I think that when you actually see it on a computer screen, the Zoom outperforms the Mini in a lot of these shots. For our last example, we have the Zoom on top, the Mini on the bottom. It looks very, very similar. You can see more detail in the zoom. I do like the coloring of the blue in the Mavic Mini. Overall, it's really similar, hard to call, and it kind of just depends on what your preference is. This is kind of funny, as I'm going to land, you know, I have the Mini on the bottom. When I'm landing, it touches down, wants to take off because it's not sure what it hit. So it kind of bounces back and forth like a basketball. Luckily, I'm able just to reach out and catch it with my hand to end it safely. No drones were harmed in this video. All right guys, I'm back and I was not expecting it to work so well. This tape job really kept the drone right there. I noticed minimal shakiness um, and since the drone was turned on, the three axis gimbal is still working. So obviously it's gonna be steady footage. I can't wait to take out these SD cards and see what it looks like back to back.
actually before I can load up the footage, I'm gonna have to cut these things apart. I can get the SD card out of the mini, but the Mavic Zoom, it's um, deep under the underbelly. So I'm gonna have to cut the cord. One thing I did notice when I was flying is the Mavic Zoom, it did take longer than normal to get up to operating speed. I didn't try to do top top in because there's a lot of flapping with the saran wrap and tape and this test wasn't to go fast, it was just to see the footage side by side. So I did notice some lagginess, but once it got there, it felt pretty steady. Um, the same thing going up and down. It could tell that there was weight underneath it. Um, I'm used to this Mavic Zoom just being super nimble, sports mode, like almost out of control. And this kind of really slowed it down. But what do you expect? I just taped on another little drone underneath it. All right, so what are my thoughts? I was impressed with the video quality of the Mavic Mini and went side by side. Obviously you can tell the zoom had some better color and some definition, but it wasn't so, so much of a difference that you would think that the Mavic Mini is just a toy and then the Mavic Zoom is more professional. I also noticed when flying in different situations how the sunlight affected each drone differently. It kind of seemed like the Mavic Mini, if there is, if the sun was coming directly into it, it really, I don't know how to say it in like a professional photography mode, but just kind of like dulled it down, I guess. And it took away a lot of the color and definition. I feel like the Mavic Zoom held up and even in those bright situations, it was still pretty clear for what it was. Um, obviously, it's not gonna be as clear when you're talking about shooting directly into the sun, but I did notice that the Mavic Mini seems to be more sensitive when flying towards the sun. These are my takeaways. I think for a $400 drone, blows out the water of anything on the market for $400, you can get really, really crisp HD footage, 2.7K at 30 frames per second. For professional things or even just more personal things where you wanna make sure the quality is good and you're probably gonna keep the footage for longer, I would say I'm gonna fly my Mavic Zoom a lot more. For a $400 drone and able to get such high quality, I mean, that's a no brainer right there. If you wanna get into drones um, or thinking about upgrading or if you even just want something really good for traveling, the Mavic Mini is awesome. I've been able to fit it in like the same kind of compartments in my camera bag where I'd put lenses and stuff like that. So I can put the Mavic Mini basically in the same spot where one big lens would go because you have to put the controller in there as well. So that's really cool. When I first got the Mavic Zoom, I used to always think like, man, this is awesome. Look how small it folds up and I can take this thing anywhere. And um, so take that a year later and I have the same feeling of, man, this is awesome. I can't believe how the Mavic Mini is so much smaller and I can take it everywhere. So it's crazy what one or two years um, does for technology, things like that. Definitely the Mavic Mini is coming with me wherever I go. And you guys have seen Yeti in the past. Um, one of my past videos, I brought her in there. She's still a puppy and she stands um, right off the camera to watch me the whole time. But when she feels like I'm not giving her enough attention, then she starts to cry. So we need to finish up this video, Yeti. Okay, so yeah. Basically, that's the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, give it a big thumbs up. That means a lot to me. That makes me feel like you guys enjoy my videos and that I'm, the time I'm putting into it is well spent. Also, leave down in the comments. I was thinking about doing this test with my Mavic Air and I don't know if a triple decker is possible, but I did look up the payload and the weight and supposedly this is able to carry that much weight. If that's something you guys want to see, I'll kind of brainstorm maybe some way to do it a little safer, but sometimes with me, I don't really go with the safest thing. I go with my gut. And my gut is that I think I could triple decker this. And as long as the drone takes off, I'll test it out a little bit to make sure it's still able to perform all right. And that could be a really, really cool test too. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, I already said that. If you enjoyed it, thumbs up, that means a lot. Subscribe down below and then check those notifications. That'll notify you when I post more videos like these. As always, my name's Adam. Fly safe, take care, peace. Say bye, peace. 
say, my name's Little Yeti, say, subscribe to my channel, follow me on Instagram, yeah, you could follow, Yeti says, follow me on Instagram at Oh, 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 oh,